welcome back to another day of live streaming our video game currently called Dream Machine. I'm Joshua Blair, the CEO and founder of Icebreaker Games. Welcome back. So last week, we were able to go around the scene and kind of set up some interactables is what we were calling them. So uh, basically, you can now go up to like this toolbox or some of these items inside the game, like the fridge and the cabinets, and you can you can now open them up um just to kind of show what that looks like real quick if we walked over with our character you can see it says press e to cycle and then it kind of cycles through a bunch of these animations i can go through them really quick or i can let them play all the way out and kind of leave it at that if i wanted to um some of them have just the single animation so like an open and close like this fridge and then eventually we're gonna do stuff that has more sound related stuff so like this TV we were able to do that kind of stuff but today today is a big day today is the day that we set up basically an interactable with the actual dream machine so what I'm thinking is one we'll be able to go up to it and we'll have that pop up just just like the refrigerator um, in the cabinets and then two um, a UI elements gonna pop up and it's gonna basically say well what level do you want to go to and for now we're gonna go ahead and open it up so that all the levels are available all ten levels um, but eventually we're gonna set it up where you have to be each level in order to move on to the next level so I'm not exactly sure what that UI is going to look like yet, and, it, and, and just like all the other UI in the game, um, most likely it's just going to be a placeholder. You know, we can fine tune it as we go. Um, we just need it to, to do what it needs to do, get us into the levels and whatnot. So I think we should just go ahead and jump right in. So first things first if you remember right last week we set up these playmaker fsms if you don't know what playmaker is i highly recommend it the visual scripting uh solution for unity and uh it just makes it really really easy to code if you're not very good at coding and, and i highly highly recommend it i think it's like 60 bucks on the asset store definitely worth checking out but what we did is we created these playmaker fsms which kind of just from the very start of the game, they go through a set of states. And then during those states, they do a bunch of different stuff. Whatever you tell it to do. So we set this one up for the radio itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that general concept over to the dream machine. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this FSM component. We're going to go over to the dream machine. Now this is going to be a dynamic item, um, one that I'm going to move over to this other folder here. Normally, so we had everything switched between stat or uh, separated between static and dynamic over here in the hierarchy. Ultimately, static is just items that never move, never do anything, and dynamic is anything that does move, or for me and in, in my case, anything that's going to be interactable as well. I'm going to want those things separate from everything so I can go and find find it very easily so you can see these are all the long list of interactables here that we did uh, last week and so now we're gonna go ahead and set that up for this this sleep machine or dream machine I'm gonna rename this we'll call it dream machine trigger and not everything that's in this FSM, this this component here, is is gonna actually apply. But in general, we can reuse a lot of this stuff. So, you know, it's gonna pop up that text. We don't want to say press E to turn on. I think we're gonna say press E to open, and then press E to close. But I haven't decided. truly how we want to do this yet because we're going to be because we're going to be dealing with the ui as well i think what we're going to do is when i press e to open the door itself on the dream machine is going to is going to move up i'll show you it'll move up like that but then all of a sudden the ui is going to pop up 
and it's gonna say pick your level. Once you pick the level, it's gonna uh, it's gonna start teleporting you to that level. Eventually, we'll probably have some cool animation where the boy shows up inside the dream machine. But uh, for now, you know we're just gonna we're gonna load that level. Uh, until then, we are going to. Um, oh, so then, so then, if you decide that you don't. Pretty much just going to have a trigger that activates the text, and then the text is going to activate a, a UI. But if the player does walk out of the area without pressing anything, you know we'll have we'll have something set up for that as well. All right, so let's look at what we could potentially do, use for UI. If we go over here to our canvas here. Um, let's see, we had the the pause menu. Let's, if we look at this in the game, you can see pause menu. We had our settings panel, our load game panel. and our save game panel we did have that action pop-up that we're we're uh kind of manipulating right now that's just like hey do open this open that for the interactable but uh let's say hypothetically we used something like this load game or save game Um, what we could do is duplicate this level, or the sorry, this panel here, and we're just gonna call it Dream Machine Panel for now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on, and then I'm gonna go into the scene view and go into 2D, so we can take a look at what this looks like here. We definitely don't need it to be called load game. Um, what we'll probably call it, at least for now, is maybe pick level or pick dream, something to that extent. We could say maybe dream levels. Something like that and then for the actual panel here we can still have it be scrollable but we are going to want to change this list I'm okay with the load still um, maybe even this panel we are going to have a preview but it's going to be bigger than that and then we are going to have a name And for now, we could just call this level one. I'm just going to rename this. I don't know why it's called a claim button. I'm just going to call it the load button. And then I think, like I said, I'm going to increase the size of this a little bit. Something, something like that. The preview, I think, maybe even be something about that that size there. We don't need this save info, I don't think. And what we'll do is kind of move this over. I feel like we have a lot of extra space, so I'm going to kind of move this stuff around a little bit more. Now we could shrink this down and make it more of a grid loading concept. Um, 
instead of just having to scroll down 10 different levels, we could see you know, what we decide to do on that one. I'm okay kind of stretching this out, making it look more like a widescreen panel there. We are going to change the preview for this. And I have a bunch of concept art that I think we're going to use for this. Um, the, there is some captures here. Let me fix my, my background. There we go. But we do have some some graphics that we used for um, some of the concept art. But I think those we should be able to use just fine. So in the UI here, I'm going to create a new folder. And we'll call it um, Green Machine Levels. drag those in and we'll go ahead and change them to sprite 2d and UI so now for this preview image I'm gonna go ahead and change this now you can see we have this cool capture for level one let me kind of move this stuff around maybe center it a little bit more Something like that doesn't look too bad. So now if we we duplicate this, we can we can have this, uh, we have a vertical layout group. So we're gonna create some spacing in between them. Something like that. Fine, we could probably round it 200 here. And so now with this second one, all we, we really gotta do is one, change the preview that's not the correct one. Let's find it. I think it was the the actual samurai one here. Let's take a look at my yep. So it was the samurai. We're trying to with these for those of you guys who aren't haven't been watching the streams, um what we're gonna do is we're gonna Kind of progress through time so we're gonna we're gonna start off kind of in the in the, the, the middle age or uh, medieval times and then we're just gonna slowly progress towards today um, or prior to them going into the bunker and we're just gonna call this level two very simple for now and we're gonna do this again for essentially 10 uh, 10 times here <laughs> So level three, I think was new, yep, this, uh, this one, the, we're calling it, currently calling it, uh, New America. And we'll call this level three. This next one is, I think it's kind of the, the Old West stuff. Or, after the Old West, I think we have this one here.
Now, um, you know, you can't really see the preview right here because this is a scrollable item, UI item. So once we actually push play and we pop this up, you'll be able to scroll down just fine. But I just want to make sure I'm doing this correctly here. This is level four and now we're on level five. This would be six. For level six, I think we had, yeah, we had kind of this farm, farm level. Kind of the simple life. <laughs> and then, so this would be level seven. Then I think we go into, yep, kind of the 21st century here. Almost done here. Level eight. And level eight is once we first start getting the, the war, the desert, and are going to war with like, um, you know, these desert countries. Fine. Level nine is when that that war kind of starts hitting home, starts coming, coming to the United States. And then our last level here is, is basically chaos in the United States and where all the real struggle, there's still going to be a very large population, but now everybody's fighting and struggling and resorting to violence. And this is level 10. So those are the proposed 10 levels for right now. Let's take a look at what those look like. You can see, um, They're showing up, but we're going to want to um, be able to scroll through that. And I'm not sure if maybe once we set up our character controller that, you know, we may not be able to click on that right away. So that could be the part of the issue. But we'll go ahead and deactivate that dream machine. If you remember right, it's been a while, but we have this initialization scene or, or state. I'm going to go ahead and add that new panel to that. That way, every time we go to load the game, it does, doesn't matter what we're doing in the editor. We're, we get kind of this clean state. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lucha Dork. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because, you know, we're only on day 13, but... We're only doing this for about two and a half hours a day as well. So um, if we were dedicating a full eight hours to this, I mean, we would be even more uh, further along. It's crazy. But um, where was I? Thanks for the comment, though, by the way. So now if we go back to the interactables. Remember, right, we setting up the dream machine interactable that's under the bunker and then dynamic and interactables here we have this this dream machine so what we're going to do is we're going to turn on that that panel that we just created that ui panel we're going to uh, just activate game object we are going to specify it so i'm going to mark this blue and then we're just going to toggle this one on now we are going to do some other stuff here but um i think about it
we might go back to this stage here. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to play test this a little bit to see how this feels. But ultimately, when we activate this this GUI, we're gonna want to turn off our player. I think I don't think we should um, be able to move around and stuff while that GUI is up in the air. I think it's gonna be kind of awkward. So let's take a look at this. We go over to oh you know what big missed a big thing here I totally forgot get out of 2d mode go over to the dream machine we're gonna need a, another box collider I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this one paste it and but this one is a trigger gotta have that that trigger otherwise it's not going to pop up the text we're just going to expand it just a little bit like that. I thought, you know, it might be funny or maybe make sense if we have to go to this side where the keyboard's at. But, you know, that could get frustrating also as a player. I, I probably should be able to just go to any side of that. Um, it's not really, I mean, besides maybe this chair, um, which we can fix eventually, it's not really overlapping with any other items that we're going to want to take. Now, if we walk over to the Dream Machine, you can see it says press E to open. And then if we press E, now the you can see our panel did pop up. I can move still, which I don't think you should be able to do. And then also, um, we can't actually scroll down here, which we're going to want to set make that happen. And then... And then we're going to want to fix that back button. The back button was set up because we copied this from a different panel. So we're going to, we're going to just say... Um, the, we're just going to want, you, want it to deactivate itself. So that's, that's pretty easy. And then um, think about this some more here. So we're also going to want to trigger that animation. And I think we already, nope, but I think we had a, that's right. In the menu scene, there is an animator on this where it opens and closes, but in this level, we do not have. It. We'll go ahead and create one. Actually, we don't even need to do that. We can just go ahead and put, put on an animator component. And then we can just select it to whichever one we had. Maybe call it anything. Take a look. Green machine, dream, open. the animation I'm just wondering what happened to oh, there it is what happened to the the actual animator we got the animator there and so you can see we already have open and close triggers thing works good there what we're going to want to do is in this on state, we're also going to want to trigger that open enemy. So we're going to do the set of that trigger. And we're going to say open. And then, like I said, we're going to want to turn off the player controller. So this could get interesting. It really depends on the controller that you're using. Lock this so it doesn't change. But, so we have our player here. You can see there's a character controller and the animations. There's all this input. 
third person controller and we got all these concepts here so the key is we want to shut this down <laughs> um but there might be an easy way to do this and a hard way to do it. Right off the bat, I want to just try turning off the character all, all together. Like, hey, UI's up, player doesn't need to be present. Let's take a look at this. We walk over. Press E to open. We have our, our our levels here. You can see I can't move around anymore. The camera did move in the background, and that's because there was no player no more. The camera was like, whoa, I'm, I'm supposed to be watching this player. He's gone. What do I do? So it did move, um, which isn't too big of a deal to me. If I back out... Oh, you can <laughs> look at the anime. That's funny. Um, we'll have to fix that, too. I back out um, you know we're gonna want it to do the opposite we're gonna want it to reactivate the character and and it to be pretty flawless and then close the thing as well so let's let's look at this start off with the animation here Let's preview this. Okay. I was worried about that. So we're going to have to not use this controller and we're going to want to set up our own. Technically, Technically, we could have still used that controller and just changed the animation. That probably would have been the easier way to do it. But let's go to our two seconds here, like we've been doing. And we're just going to say that any split needs to open. Now we have a lot more space because we raised the roof here. Originally, in the the main scene, the menu scene, we didn't have that much space. So we we could only go so high with this this lid. I think in general, I think that that height should be fine. I'll preview that again. Yeah, I think that should be good. But I will go ahead and change the animation to not loop. Now if we go back into this, let's go into the animator controller. You can see we don't have that trigger. Talk open. We're gonna set up like we've done with a lot of these interactions. We're just gonna call this idle. Really not that this we're gonna call this idle. Then it has the default state, and we're going to use that that trigger to send us into that animation. Actually, we don't want that. We're going to want to then copy paste this animation, and we're just going to do it in the reverse. And call this close. So I will go ahead and add that trigger as well. Call it close. And that goes back to the, the idle. All right, so animation should be good. And then, and then uh, turn your player back on. Actually, let's not do it that way. 
copy this one. And we're going to drag this into here and we're going to turn that back on. All right, let's take a look. Move over. There's the dream machine. If we press E, you can see it opened in the background. Um, crawling is not is not working still. We'll take a look at that. If we take if we click back, you can see we're back in there. And we didn't set it up to close yet. But we'll add that as well. So make progress here. So we've set this animation trigger to open. What we're meant to do is set that to close. That'll close back up. Then let's take a look at that that uh, sliding element here on this pa background panel. So we copied this over from the load and save, which pretty sure worked pretty pretty flawlessly. We can double check that in our scene view. If we just reload the this scene here, we're gonna open it additive, then just unload our current bunker scene and, and just push play on this menu. I know some of you guys probably haven't seen this in a long time. <laughs> So this is basically our splash screen, our load screen. You can see even our bunkers made some changes. Our roof is now, or the ceiling is much higher. But if we go to load, or yeah. I'm trying to think of a way to verify that this scrolling mechanism was working, but. We may have to do some manipulation here in the load game panel. Just duplicate this a bunch of times. Skip that. And what we're going to have to do too is update this scene based off of our actual level scene. We'll do that some other day. So you can see we have multiple saves here, but they the scrolling is not working. So it's not just an issue with with the level. It was an it's an issue in general with those panels that we copied. I'll load our old level back up. I'll go ahead and remove that scene. We'll worry about fixing up the menu again later. Let's take a look and see why this canvas is not scrolling. We do have the an actual handle and sliding area I think that's part of the issue here is it's not showing up over you can see it's activated here and then for whatever reason it gets deactivated once or I think it's because of this. So our content there, you can watch, I don't know if you can see that on you guys then, but you can see there's this bar here. If we have no content, technically the bar doesn't need to be extended, but we have a bunch of content. So um, we're gonna want to scroll this down quite a ways. Um, you can see, this is how far down our content goes. So we're going to want that to 
We're gonna want that to fairly match. Take a look now. You can see now we can scroll down. See almost all the levels. We didn't get all the way down to that level 10 there. But we're getting there. Probably just a little bit more. I also just noticed that it was a, it's adjusting the spacing here. Which we don't need it to do that. can grab that. We probably have more space now. That's frustrating. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Move this up there for a second. Content, we're going to move. Generally in the same area. And then we'll just put all this back in the content. And then of course we got to adjust this spacing again. Probably about 125. Now hopefully this works. Looks good. Alright. I get spacing. Scroll down. And not quite. Still can't barely see level 10. I'm gonna do the exact same concept again. And we're just gonna lower it a little bit more. That looks good. Now, I do want to also, you can see we still have the press E to open in the background. We're gonna to wanna to disable that. We don't want that distracting you from this view here. So when the trigger, the player's in the zone, once they turn it on, we want to turn this text off. But um, I'm thinking we should do the opposite too with that back button. So now maybe if you just push back, that text is returned back on again. Take a look, see what that looks like. You can see everything looks good. We got all the 10 levels. Push back, and there you go. Back to E to open, reload. Look, I think that looks pretty good. Of course, we're gonna add sounds eventually to the to that uh, that lid opening and shutting. Um, you know, we may have to we may have to um, remove. Or I don't know. I'm thinking we we're probably just gonna have to go into maybe art list and really dive in and try to find. I a pretty cool sound. I, I can't really think of a specific sound, you know, that would make sense. Something we could copy, something we could mimic. 
something we could use as like a reference. You know, there is kind of a hydraulic, I think, to it, concept to it. Um, we may have to look into even some sci-fi, um, some sci-fi options, maybe even some movie references, something like that. Um, but let's now set up these levels now just just to speed things up it's we're not gonna create 10 separate levels obviously today there's just not enough time eventually we will but to save time, I'm going to use the pre-made asset or the pre-made scenes from the Cinti Studio app, asset packs. That makes sense. And what we're going to do is we're going to load those um, and that's going to represent our level. So our first, our first one was this ancient empire. You can see it comes with like this demo scene. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. And then we're gonna go into our scenes. We're gonna paste it. Or wait, let's let's find it again. There we go. You can do Control D, duplicate it. And then I'm just gonna drag this new one into the assets, the root folder, and drag it into this. Now. So this one we're gonna name um gonna be i call it zero two and that's just the index of the actual level so, so technically the menu is going to be index zero and the level it, the bunker level that we're in right now is index one so now index two which would be our next level that the player can go to is that evil level but I will call it dream level one. I know that can get a little confusing. If we look at the actual build settings here, these are the scenes that we're gonna build once we create this game. So you can see right here, this number represents zero, index zero, and then this one and one. So that's kind of what we're referencing. And so if we want to add this new level, now we have index two, dream level one i guess we didn't include the zeros that last one so I'll, i will change that but that's what we're going to want to do for all 10 of these scenes so we remember the the order our next level was the the samurai I can't remember did we we forget to download that one i think we did interesting i thought we got everything but i guess we did it so we're gonna go ahead and do a search for that i want to say i could just do polygon And if we can find, I can't remember the actual name. It's not, I don't think it's Samurai. Yeah, maybe it is actually. Go ahead and import that into the scene. Didn't take too long. It's actually a pretty small file. This particular level is probably going to be small, I think. I mean, I'd, I'd rather it not be, but I think we are going to be limited on assets for this Samurai package. So it's going to be maybe not a lot of exploration for this level, but more of like doing quests or talking to people or kind of learning how, you know, the Samurais lived back in those days. And I think it'll be a good, a good chance to teach the, the player uh, maybe archery or or some type of weapon skill um, 
you know, so we'll, we'll see. I mean, there's, it, there's so much we can play around with, it's crazy. Um, let's see, we download that one. It doesn't come with a, a URP file, so we're going to go ahead and update those. And then let's just drag that into the app. All right. Now we got the samurai here. We do have this demo scene again. So I'll just do pretty much repeat exactly what we did earlier. I'm going to duplicate it, move it over, move it into our scenes. And we'll call this three and then dream level. Right. And then our next level after the samurai was the new America, I think. Yep. So that is if I can find that one. We have Western and Western Frontier. I think it's the Western one. You can go ahead and load this scene additive and just take a look. And that is correct. You can see this one's... This one actually... I'm not sure if this is the one I was thinking. Of. This looks... This looks like just the, the Western, not the Western Frontier, so... Take a look at this one. Oh, forgot to add it. Additive. There we go. This one. This is the one I was looking for. This is going to include more of the, the Native Americans here. These two scenes are going to be very similar, but... I think, I think we can find a way to, to progress the timeline still. So we just need the scene here. We're going to go ahead and duplicate it again. And so this will be four and then dream level now the reason why I'm doing this is because we're gonna set up all of these levels or these demo scenes to those buttons that we just created so when we click load it's gonna load level one load level two level three so on and so forth and so even even though we don't have character controllers in these levels there's the native um, even though we don't have the the character controllers in there it's still going to load the scene and then whatever wherever we have the camera placed or whatnot um that's what you'll see currently but we will add the character controller we're going to have actually different characters we're not going to play the child in these dream levels we'll actually play somebody else so it's going to give you a chance to really experience these levels but through somebody else's eyes so i think it'd be pretty interesting and i think it's going to be fun to play for the next one we have would just be the actual Western. Now this is a little tedious. I don't know if you guys know where that's from. If you guys know where that's from? Post it. Post it in the uh, chat. We'll go ahead and load this scene just to make sure this is the one I want. Here we go. And yeah, you can see kind of the the beaches here. This is exactly what I was looking for.
this would be six, and then dream level five. We're almost there, guys. We're halfway. We're there. So then after war, I think, is the farming level. Yep. So that one's pretty easy. Going to duplicate that one. Let's drag it into our assets folder, just the root. And then we'll drag this into the scene. We are going to need to add each one of these into our project settings. But I'll do that once they're all created. After the farm level, I think it's the 21st century for the modern nowadays times. Now, so with this one, I we have a lot of options, and I haven't really quite defined it. I kind of wanted some some input on this from the viewers, but. You know, we're going to do something in, in today's times with the player. We could put them in an office building. We could put them in like a mall. I mean, we have a lot of a lot of options with Cinti Studios. Like there's just a lot of modern stuff. There's towns and and um, huge cities. So we can really do anything. For now, all I all I put into this into this package, because I didn't really know what we we're going to want, is I put the Street Racer Cinti package. Now, it, I think it would be, it would be cool if we actually threw the player into a level where he had to learn how to drive. Um, you know that that would be a nice twist. I I really like some of the older video games where one minute you're walking around and you're doing combat, kind of like the Final Fantasies, um, but then next minute you're doing a level where you have to drive something. Uh, you know, so I I really think that would be kind of cool to do, or at least give the option where. You're walking around and then and then you get to drive too. That's just me, you know, kind of thinking about what that scene's gonna be like. Until we actually start working on it, I'm not. I'm sure. And like I said, I would love to hear feedback. All right, so this is now eight. Two more left. All right, three more left. <laughs> so after the nowaday times, we have the desert conflict. I think that's yep. This military pack. This is actually a really, really cool pack. I think we should be able to have some fun on that on that scene creating that level it is going to be somewhat difficult to, to play test all of these because there's just so many we're going to have to load each one but uh you know it's something we're going to we're going to have to do And then after the Desert Conflict, we have this War Hits Home. And that was this Battle Royale demo here. Almost there, guys. I think our last one here is the apocalyptic one. That's just basically the when the struggle hits. And we're going to use this apocalyptic one several times, actually. 
maybe maybe not several but we're gonna use it at least twice um one we're gonna use it to represent the the, the very last level level 10 but then we're also going to use it for the very first time the player leaves the bunker build settings here we're going to want to drag these in we already did two three four five six seven no six seven eight nine and and then index 11 which is level 10. there we go and now if we go back to the actual canvas here and go into the all those uh, those load buttons okay, are going to do something each one's going to do something different Let's add an FSM here. We're going to just call it load level. I'm going to go ahead and add my watermark. And for those of you guys who don't know with Playmaker, um, <laughs> just looking at uh, Luchadork's comment, this game in space would be, would also be cool. Opens up a door and whoa on the moon. <laughs> Um, so I was thinking about having space too. We have something that, uh, you know, works pretty well. We have a lot of sci-fi assets from Cinti. The problem is that because I'm doing the timeline concept, um, the sci-fi would, would essentially take place in the future. So I think that would kind of throw off some of our story a little bit and it'd be kind of hard to explain on why the player is experiencing a sci-fi level. Now. That being said, I thought about having some Easter egg dreams that the player could find at some point. Like he's going through the apocalypse and he finds like a disc or something. Uh, and he brings it back to his father and his father puts it in the machine. Next thing you know, you get to play a sci-fi level. Not something like that would be really cool. And then I don't necessarily have to explain that it's part of the story. It's just something that he found almost like a video game. I don't know, you can let me know what you guys think about that. But kind of where I'm thinking. I'm gonna do... Um, on button click event here on this FSM. It, it wouldn't necessarily be a side quest, it would just be a level that you can experience and, and go through in the Dream Machine. So the dream machine, what it truly is in this game, is kind of like training for the child. The child is eventually going to go out into the world. It, he's going to eventually go out and experience the apocalyptic event, and he's going to have to survive at that point. But in order for the father to let his child leave the bunker and go experience that, he wanted him to, to go through a series of training. And so that's kind of what the, the dream machine represents is just training, learning how to do combat, learning how to fire weapons, maybe learning how to drive. I don't know. Um, you know, those kind of things it's, is what what's going to happen in the, the, the dream machine. The so once you finish all 10, you're you're now um, you finish the the training. You, you you're now ready to go out into the into the world. Um, and you actually I'm even thinking about giving the player um, some type of skill point for each level that they complete and then they'll have a skill tree that they can go and put um, into different categories or whatnot. 
So, so if we did have an extra, like an Easter egg level, that's just a, something you can bring back to the bunker, load into the dream machine, and maybe even get you an extra skill point. Uh, but that's just kind of what I'm thinking. I know that's a, <laughs> a long, drawn-out explanation, but hopefully that makes it. All right, back to this FSM. I'm gonna call this idle. We're gonna create a new uh, event called button press. And then, so basically the player, this is for our load level one. Um, we're just gonna have this called load level. Um, actually, we're gonna do it. I think like, we could do it. I think load level is fine. We're gonna do it by index, which is why we named them the way. Okay. Um, it's why we named it the scenes the way we did, so we can reference them by index. So this one will be index level two. So we're just going to call this load level. And that should work. So now if I copy this FSM to all of these load buttons here. Now I just gotta go back in and just change the index level. So on this one, we're gonna do three, four, we're just incrementing it by one every single time. We're almost ready to play test this. doesn't seem like our numbers are correct. Take a look at this. Start from the beginning. Oh. We have index 2. Play test this. If we go over here, we can now look get our new UI. We could scroll down to any level we want. Since we're gonna want to play test this, we're gonna have to load each individual one, make sure it's working properly. So let's just go ahead and fire up level one here. Now we will do some type of uh, loading screen. I think that's gonna be important. Um, but you can see it did, it did load this, this level. If we looked in our game view, this is where the camera's at. So it did take a little while and it was hard to even notice that it was loading, but that's just because we had no, you know, loading screen. So we'll definitely do that. Uh, maybe I'll create some cool concept art that we can cycle through in the loading scenes and then have actually a loading bar. So that's, le that's that level, that seems to be working pretty good. So if we go back through here and we try again, try level two here. That one loaded pretty quick. Like that. That first scene, that first level, the, the, the medieval one, that thing is massive. So I, I can understand why it took a little bit longer to, to get into. And then we have this Western Frontier, that's gonna be the Native American one. 
And let's see. Then Midwest. Wild Wild West. That's working. And we're going to load this one. The war never changes. For those of you guys who did not guess where that's come from, that comes from Fallout. The original Fallout, like 1 and 2 on PC way back in the day. They used to all start off or war never changes. Um, let's see. Ooh, that one looked good. Take a look at the farming one. Not sure what we're going to do with the farming level. I, you can play around with this and have fun with this as well because there is actually some pretty cool even tractors and crops and all this stuff. We can almost potentially do like a farming simulator concept for for the farm level there. And then I told you guys about level this level seven. You know, we're just gonna do anything modern from putting them into a, an office building to making them race cars. You know, anything to that level. There we go. I definitely I want each you know each level to be pretty different but also just just completely fun and interesting it to the point where you almost want to go back and do the dream levels from time to time if we can achieve that that would that would be great there will be some of these levels kind of like open world to an extent you know we'll have this a pretty large world that you can walk around and do things um so it is it, there is that potential to do new stuff every time you load the level but as long as you do the the main quest line and beat that level then you'll get credit for it and it's going to unlock the next level That, that level, I don't know if you heard it, even had its own, uh, own music. Funny. Alright. We're on level 9. One more to go. One looks good. This one, this is probably going to be like the really good shooting trainer. Um, or combat trainer. I'm pretty much just expecting this to be like an all-out actual battle royale concept here but again we can we can figure that out as as we go and then lastly level 10 the apocalyptic there we go so all 10 of those buttons are now set up um, and we're making pretty good time. We're only about an hour into this this live stream, so um, we can at this point can really can really do whatever we want to do here. And, and so what I'm thinking for now is maybe let's um, fine tune or take our character controllers and cr and start getting those going on the scenes themselves. You can see we had our first dream level here. I'm going to go ahead and open this scene additive. We could also do, maybe if we have time today, we'll do the, the, lo the loading screen. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and where our main camera was. You know, it's kind of in this. <laughs> I have both scenes loaded on top of each other, so you can see this is our bunker here. Uh, but, you know, we could start our character anywhere we want. I say potentially we can start them here. Just, you know, we can do. We can do anything we wanted. Um. But, uh... <laughs> no, 
Now I know where that music was coming from. Um, so we can do anything we want, obviously, but for now, uh, if we take a look at this scene, this ancient empire scene, we do have some prefabs and characters. I don't, I don't know who we're gonna play as. We could play as a soldier. We could play as just a regular civilian. We could play as like a, you know, the actual, um, the leader here or the 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 senator, the politician. Uh, I mean, we could really, you know, have fun with this. You know, whatever I think is. We I don't want to be like all the other video games out there. So I think we gotta find something that's just gonna be fun for the player. Um, for now, just just off the top of my head, let's let's do this politician here, and then what we're gonna want to do is copy the our main camera here, our player follow, and we're gonna copy the the actual kid here, and we're gonna copy it into our scene. But then with this, with this scene, there's that music again. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> what we're going to do is we gotta find these guys, but we're gonna want to drag. Oh, we don't need this bunker scene no loaded right now. I'm gonna go ahead and drag him down here. like that now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take out the politician again here and then all of those these components we're gonna want to now add to this new politician guy mentioned this before but I'd really love to be able to copy more of these components at a time unfortunately with unity as of right now as far as I know you can only do one you can't do a bunch of them I think we've missed this rigid body push here yeah let's open this this is just do it the easy way here <laughs> We got the animator, character controller, starter assets, input, the rigid body, their person, and I think even the player input. Yep. Everything, let's just verify the in here. We are gonna want to create this camera root again. That works. I'll go ahead and create an empty game object here. All this camera root. And then we're just going to want to adjust its center mass. Thing like that. And then we're going to want to reference it here. Can I do this again? Yeah, we forgot to lock. <laughs> we forgot to lock the politician, so we were comparing the kid to the kid. Awesome. Good work. We got the animator, character controller, starter assets, basic rigid body push, and yep, we're missing that third person controller script here, so I'll go ahead and copy that. Who else we get? 
I'm gonna move this script up. Not, I don't want to have to open up this tab. And then we're gonna cop move over that camera root there. I think that looks good. We can disable our old character. Lock it again. There we go. And we are gonna have to change this one. Yep. Change that to here. Alright. Now if we play test this, we should be able to walk around as this politician. Of course we yeah, disable this other other camera here. Ah, let's try. There we go. Wow, he looks. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's funny. He uh, he's shrunk down now. Hilarious. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> And, and and once again, no jumping, man. I remember not. That is hilarious. Um, somehow we we took on the avatar of the <laughs> of the kid there. So that's what shrunk us down, and made us look like a kid. That's actually really funny. We try that again. Now we look. Like a normal politician, we look like an adult here. And yeah, so we can now move around this scene and do do who knows? I mean, there's there could be a, there's gonna be a lot of interactables in a scene like this, like that. And another issue that we're gonna have, um, and and one of the reasons why games like this take so long to create is because this type of scene right here could be filled with NPCs. And so now we have to figure out how we want to establish that. Um, most likely we'll probably have just NPC 99% of all NPCs are just going to um, you know just maybe have some kind of text above their name whenever you try to talk to them. And then that 1% you know, we'll, we'll have it where you can actually go into dialogue, choose what you're going to say. Um, but that 1% is going to be based off of, you know, the quest line. Who are these important people that we talk to? Anybody else who's not important, we're, and we're just going to have like, hey, how, how's it going type of concept. We're also going to have to take a look at a lot of these colliders. Which is another thing that takes a long time to set up with these games is you know the more complex your scene is like this one i mean there's more there's so much play testing that, that that comes involved because uh you know for all we know like like you just saw me trying to climb up those those stairs i mean there's something in the way there that's just preventing me from doing it um and it's just so hard to test everything I mean, even the big games like skyrim and and Assassin's Creed, all that stuff. I mean, you're still going to find a lot of these bugs or a lot of these issues. Walking on the roof now, though. It looks like, you can see, I'm, I'm not really falling. I think that's part of our issue. It's probably because we don't have a rigid body on our player. So, anytime we jump try to do anything, nothing's really pulling us back down to the earth. You know, we need to have something that works for like this pool. You know, if the player can get in here, you know, he's got to be able to get out. And, you know, we're flying away now. If the player is going to you know, be able to get into the pool. Does he go swimming? Does is do we just put a a uh, you know a glider all the way around so he can't do that? Um, you know, what are we gonna want to do? You know, so that's that's stuff we're gonna have to consider. Uh, we don't have to do that today. I think let's just get these player controllers 
set up for level here. So I think this one is good for now. Um, let's go ahead and go to our next scene here. Which is the this one. I'll go ahead and copy over our politician and our cameras again. And then we can unload this. So uh, now we're we're in samurai. Samurai level. Which I've always I haven't really played very many RPGs, samurai RPGs, but uh, I've always wanted to. Um, always just been a huge fan of this time. And uh and some of their concepts. So it, I think it'd be really cool to play something like that. We'll take a look at the samurai characters that we could play as. I'm not against the character ever being a female character in these dream levels. Um, I think that would be, you know, just fine. Um, but I think, I think, um, for now, at least this particular level, we'll go with a male character. And in the comments, uh, Uchidork, he asked, you know, are GTA NPCs a lot of work to do from, from game dev standpoint? And, and, and yes, <laughs> that the, the main question, uh, or the main answer is definitely 100%. And that's why you still see, even after all of this, there are still issues with some of those NPCs in, in, in GTA. You know, I've seen tons of videos where they're like, hey, look at this glitch. Um, but, uh, and yeah, like, in GTA, you can't talk to the players, um, the NPC. They kind of say stuff to you like, hey, whatever, but you can't really talk back to them because they're not part of the main quest line. But I will tell you that there are game engines, like CryEngine, for example. I've worked on CryEngine. CryEngine, um, at least it was, I don't know if it still is, but it was kind of the main uh, game engine for games like Assassin's Creed. And they handle NPCs uh, pretty easy uh, compared to Unity. And since they knew that they were going to be a, a, a game that's going to have a crap ton of UPC, uh, NPCs, if you think about Assassin's Creed, very similar to GTA, there's just NPCs everywhere. And you can bump into them, run into them, kill them, talk, not really talk to them, but kind of like GTA, they'll talk to you a little bit. Um, you can do all this stuff with them. So they needed a, a game engine that can handle that. So CryEngine, you can, I mean, I, I worked on CryEngine for only a couple months, but I had a pretty intense scene with, with hundreds of NPCs, all acting differently, all doing stuff, all walking around, sitting down, uh, some of you know once you attack them a lot of them would attack you or they would run and go hide i mean there was a lot of really cool ai concepts uh, and built just built into cry i really enjoyed that part with unity it's it's not that simple uh, if you decide that you're going to do a bunch of npcs um, we're going to have to go in and tell each individual npc kind of what you're going to do where you're going to go what are your mannerisms? What's your animation? What's your text? What's your your dialogue? You know, we're gonna have to set up a lot of this stuff. And yeah, maybe we could create a script that does a lot of the hard work for us. Um, but in general, we're gonna have to create those things so they, they don't come standard with Unity. I know that was a long answer, but hopefully that does question. So back to this scene. Um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, so, yep, Luchador, yeah, I mean, different game engines, I mean, a lot of times, back in the day, when, when, it, when a company decided they were going to make a video game, they would actually design their own engine first, and then they would use that engine to build their video game. A lot of games are built these days in Unreal or Unity, 
and so they don't have to build their own engine but games um like uh uh, even Madden, I think, doesn't use either Unreal or um, or Unity. I think they use something different. Um, I, I want to th think that I want to say they use like Frostbite or something like that. But yeah, so these those those game engines are going to be specifically designed to do the more heavy lifting, depending on what you want to do in your game. So back to here. Um, I'm thinking we can. Just select. I mean, we could go with some of these samurais. Um, I think the ninjas would probably be the bad guys in this particular level. Um, the the sensei here. I don't know if you can see that. And then you have like these villagers, and then these females. I wish there was just your stereotypical like soldier but not in his armor because i mean they didn't just walk around i don't think looking like this all day long um but let's let's just for now use this guy he looks pretty cool and we might even be able to turn a couple things off so like this flag i don't think we we need that um it's cool he does have the sword there. Open to be able to turn his mask off. There are some concepts that we can turn on, but I don't see anything with the mask. Which is fine. We can still use this character for now, but we will have to, at some point, I'll truly decide what kind of character that for this particular one. So again, all we gotta do is copy over the all these components. So I'm gonna lock this one and pull up the properties on this one. So it's just really easy to copy over. This time I'm only going to copy the controller and not change the avatar. Although that was pretty funny to see. I don't think I've done that before. So we got the third person, the starter, rigid body push, character controller, and the player input. I think we're good there. Now we just gotta set up the camera root here. And select that to the center mass again. And then we're going to reference it. here and on the player in here but uh not we're not really moving but we gotta do some troubleshooting again <laughs> I'll check the things and we're just gonna take a look at this guy again I don't think we forgot anything never know sometimes when you do try to do this stuff fast it just you know you end up making a mistake Not actually comparing it to the, the right one here. And this is indeed the right camera root. We have starter assets here. 
basic by push player in all that stuff seems to be working pretty good okay we did forget to change that maybe that was the issue there we go looks better anyway but we're not not walking very well for some reason interesting our ground layers this is all default that's the issue here so with root motion for those of you guys who don't know um, it's kind of like letting the animation um, move the forward move the object forward you can kind of see the, the tooltip there automatically move the object using the root motion from the animation and I don't think we wanted that there we go now you can see we're moving around pretty good the scene looks pretty cool you know this is a small little samurai village um you know there's a lot of concepts that we can do here that i think should be pretty cool i really like like the cherry blossom trees there but like i said the only problem with this level is it's fairly small so you, know, you can see everything you see is the extent to this level so it's going to be kind of almost easier to set up than the last one but we're going to have to be creative on how we're going to make that look good and, and feel good and play good there is this area just kind of looking what else do we got I think even inside, yeah, most of these buildings, they don't have an interior, if not all of them. That's another thing that, uh, you know, we'll have to consider. Either one, we have to decorate the insides, which is, you know, fairly difficult if they don't come designed to have an interior. Or two, you'd have to create a kind of like a low level, kind of like the way Skyrim did it, where you would, you know, go to open a door and it loads a whole new level. Either way, that's kind of a pain, and, uh, and I'd prefer not to have a bunch of loads based on the level. Um, so we'll have to figure something. It probably isn't going to go and indicate any buildings here. <laughs> And then we're also going to want to create something, same with him, but the last one. We're going to want to create a, a wall or border or rocks or something all the way around so at no point in the player ever get outside them. That's also something tricky that, that you'll have to do per level. If the player just manages to find a way how to climb this rock, I mean, notice he can't see, he won't see nothing, then he could fall off the edge. Um, so those are all things that we will have to consider at some point and uh it's gonna take some time but we'll we'll get there for now let's go ahead and do the next scene so we just did dream level two here we're gonna do dream level three and just like last time we're gonna copy over our concepts and unload that one. Ah, it's crashed. Uh, 
Sorry about that. Happens from time to time. Hopefully it doesn't happen too often here. But I'll get that going as soon as possible. There are Unity bug reports that you can send in. I'm... At least for now. I think, uh... Not really worth it. Time wise, anyway. back in we do have a we had that auto saver asset pack that I downloaded in the very beginning so anytime you push play it's gonna auto save so that's nice but we may have lost something um, we'll take a look see yeah I think this one looks fine and then we didn't really make any major changes to this one besides just copying in the new stuff. So that part didn't get saved. Ah, oh, weird. It does not like that at all. Try this again. Okay. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with that level. Back up and going here. Load that scene again. I'll try skipping it. Now. Maybe let's try copying these ones instead. Seems like the issue is when I try to unload this. Yep. That is so weird. I apologize for this. I've never seen this before. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Take me a little bit to just troubleshoot this. I'm not it definitely seems like some kind of bug, but but you know we've been loading and unloading additive scenes, you know, this this entire time with no issues, so I can, I don't know what all of a sudden the problem would be. Um ah. All right, the, that at least seemed to work. Now, look, 
go. We'll remember to disable the main camera this time. And now we're in that Western Frontier package. So look at what the characters have here. I kind of want to focus on the Native Americans here. So let's take a look at. We could play as like a chief. Warrior. Couple warrior concepts that look pretty cool. I don't think we'll play as any of the the other characters because that's what we're gonna do in the next level. So somebody like this guy, I think work pretty well. Right. And just like all the other times, we'll go ahead and lock this guy and copy over all the components here. Good. We'll add the the empty game object here, the camera root. Ah. <laughs> and untoggle the. The actual samurai, not the, not this guy. And we just have to assign the player roots here. And we should be golden. Oh, we not toggle this guy off. I'm getting animation here. Why? Okay, try this again. There we go. Finally, hey, we are good to go. Level 3 now has a character controller. <laughs>
Now let's go to level four. Hopefully no more air. I'll copy over the new stuff. Man, this scene is not very organized. See their hierarchies. Holy cow. Everyone. There's that area. Oh, man. Air is kicking my butt, guys. I have no idea why it's doing that. I know what it doesn't like doing, but I don't know why it doesn't like what I'm doing. So I guess we're not gonna have to do it that way, no. Do it a different way, I guess. Tired of, I'm tired of this error, so we're gonna do it a different way. Just like everything else in Unity, there's probably hundreds of ways to do it. Every this level and I did save it so we should yep have our here I'm gonna go ahead and try to organize this uh, just a slight bit here this is just ridiculous uh, so what I'm gonna do is just create an empty game object just call it scene I'll go ahead and reset the transform and now we can just essentially just shift click, select everything but our character and our camera, and move it in there. That's just too much to have a folder there. There we go. That is much better. And so now if we go to our asset stores and asset store folder, go to our westerns. Now we could guess, I guess we could pick characters from either one. But we could do more of a you know, business owner, sheriff. Sheriff might be kind of cool. Let's drag him in there. I'll go ahead and create the camera root here. I copy everything over again. Now, there's, there's probably way, different ways to do this. You know, we could create, you know, a prefab that has all of these concepts applied. Um, and, and we could just drag in that prefab. But then we're going to also need to have a bunch of different looks already built into that prefab so we could toggle off what the character looks like. And then, and then eventually, like I've said in other streams, we're going to want to change, you know, free character controller, essentially, because this particular one, we don't want them to walk the same, maybe, or we we don't want them to fight the same. They're going to have different sets of weapons. So I almost don't want just one prefab that works as for every character. I'm going to want one prefab per level, and we're going to work on each individual character per level. Right. You have to assign this other camera root. This. Let's see if we got this in the first try. 
first try. first try because we forgot one simple thing and that was our apply root motion there we go all right now we're the sheriff's guys nice tumbleweed that's not moving man sheriff of this town we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fix it up pretty good <laughs> I like the train. That, that'll be some cool stuff to animate and uh, get some sounds going to that. Um, we're going to need some kind of um, path for it to follow, too. Not just a straight shot off, off into the distance, so... But this scene is good to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just temporarily... Is we're going to do this a little bit different. Just because of that bug. I'm going to drag these in as a prefab. This... And so now, now what I'll do is I'll go to the scenes and we were just on level four. We'll just go into level five here without having to open the scene additive and and now we can just drag in that prefab and it's going to have all the items up here. I will say once again I'm going to create an empty game object here another scene they didn't organize very well I reset the transform And like all of this. Go. Disable the main camera here. So now if we go into our prevabs and just drag this character in here. But I'm gonna go ahead and unpack it. Now you can see we have these three objects we can drag it into the scene and do exactly what we've been doing there so for this particular particular scene I'm not sure what our guys gonna look like um, I think we use this one take a look take a look looks like we have a lot of options So we could be a officer, be a soldier. This one even has um, somewhere. Remember, right? This war, this one had some tents. That uh, there we go, medical tents. We could even be in charge of medical. There is Russian soldiers, including a <laughs> a Hitler asset here. That would be kind of interesting. Wondering if they had any. 
nurses or doctors. There we go. We got a female nurse. Yeah. Not sure what we do here. But I can imagine it would be... We could make this scene you're a female nurse and you're healing everybody. Um, and so we could have all this combat going on in the background and gunshots, explosions, you know, screams, you, you name it, just this chaotic scene. And then, and then somehow you're, you're the one who has to go around and heal all these people. Um, I think that could potentially be fun. I don't know if it's as fun as actually storming the beaches though, but but I don't know if I feel like that story's been played so many times in video games. So I just don't know if that's what we should do. Um And then I just don't know You know how in depth we would want this scene as far as combat goes. I mean there's you know tanks and airplanes and all this craziness that we would have to set up if we were going to do combat in this particular scene. So I was really thinking, I mean, there's even bombers over here. So I was really thinking either you're like somebody who does repairs on, on stuff, like maybe you're repairing airplanes and they see them take off and go fight, or you're, um, like I said, in, in part of this, this camp here. Now this is, um, these are German vehicles and German tanks over here. So we may have to set this up, the scene up to be more, um, like you're fighting on the other side. Or maybe you're a German nurse. I don't know. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yes. Healing. Feeling the Germans, they can age. That'd be crazy. But for now, we can we can um, leave it as this this female here. So we're just gonna keep doing what we've done a couple times now, and that set up to move around. definitely love to hear you guys feedback um you know any any ideas we have for for these levels or these characters i mean nothing's gonna be set in stone at this point um and i really i really like the idea of having the you know the players you guys i love having your guys' input and help kind of drive the game itself um because I mean, ultimately, yeah, I'm the one creating it, but I don't really feel like it's my game. I feel like it's everybody's game. I feel like, you know, having the community speak on the on these issues and these concepts and maybe even vote on some of these things, I think you know, would be huge. Did we get this in the first try? Find out. Yes, we did. Yeah, imagine if there's a bunch of people here complaining, hurting, and you gotta do some type of way to heal them, go get supplies in another tent. Um, you know, we want to create it, make it stressful, but it could still be pretty interesting and then have nothing but explosions and guns going around out there. I don't want to oversimplify the scene. Um, you know, 
Because if we just limit it to just these tents, you can't do anything else. That might get, get a little boring, so. This idea is definitely going to need to be fine-tuned. It's going to need to be perfected. Sure. But level 5 is now officially set up. So let's move on to level 6. The farm level. A little bit better organized. Good. Dragon, our character prefab. We're going to unpack this. Drag this out. Now, when it comes to these char this character, we got only, what, six pick from here? Including the Scarecrow. But we do have this older farmer here. But you can see we have we have some older trucks and newer tractors. You know, we're not gonna ever really specify what year this is. But uh, if we wanted the character to drive, you know, a tractor or a truck, that'd be pretty cool to do in this in this scene. Um, I'm thinking if it would be cool to make this somehow be food related or crop related. Essentially teaching the, the character, um, the main character, the boy, you know, how important food is and then how to potentially grow it and whatnot. Get this guy set up. I keep in that static button. Not what we. We could have also created a script that applies all of these to the game object for us if we wanted. But uh, I don't think we need. At least not yet. something again. Nope. Look at that. We got the sprinklers going on. We got water puddles over there. That's pretty cool. Rock. This house actually has an interior, which is nice. We could decorate that up if we wanted. We got we got a lot of options with this pack and I like it. Yeah. That one looks good. Um Yeah, let's see. Not guy no more. That was level six. Now we're gonna go into level seven here. 
And for now, this is the Street Racer. Pretty cool scene. Got a lot of... A lot of aspects, a lot of concepts. Not sure if there's a spot... Piling the shader. But yeah, I'm looking for something like over here where we can put with the guy. We could have some type of racer here. Not sure. This guy's just wearing a hoodie. He doesn't really look much like a racer. This guy kind of does. But I do want to have some... Let me go with this guy. Um, I want to have some variety too to our characters. Uh, I don't want them all just to kind of look. For now, let's, let's use this guy. Once again. You guys think I should use a different character or use one over the other one? Just by all means, let me know in the chat. Hit me up in Discord. Um, or wherever you guys like. I'll drag in our character and unpack this. I'm gonna create the empty, the camera root here. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and lock this guy, copy that controller. I really like being able to copy directly from those components, that's pretty cool. Then we'll just copy all this stuff in there. change that camera root. Now on this particular one I, I don't see their main camera. They have it hidden so I'll do a search for this. And under their camera lights. Fine. And we got a raining scene, that's pretty cool. Weather is always something great to add, I think. Decent. Yeah, one's working good. Of course, if we're walking around, we don't want these arrows coming up. We do have this cool garage here. And once again, we could always make it so we're fixing the cars and racing them, but I don't know. I think racing them. And believe it or not, I've never actually made a racing game before. So if we threw in a racing level, some of those concepts um, would be new to me, but it'd probably be fun to create. So yeah, this one's good to go. On seven, eight.
Almost done, guys. This is the military one. It's got a lot of good characters here. You got anybody from soldiers to civilians to uh, contractors to the, the actual bomb suit here. We had him like doing like EOD bomb removal type stuff. I mean, I mean you name it, it's in this. You can see it's. Now I'll just throw this guy out here. Yeah, it seems pretty cool. It'll work. And I'm just trying to get through this fairly quickly. We are running, running low on time, and I'd, I'd like to get all of these that up before we leave today so we have this one and then two more to do Definitely would help to be able to copy and paste all of these at the Oh. Pretty cool. We'll give him some cool guns or whatnot. But yeah, this will be a pretty fun level. A lot of options we can do here. So that one is done. We're now on level nine. This is our battle royale scene here. We got, got some pretty crazy options here. Most of them look bald just because you have all of these different attachments that you can put on the, the character. We can really create this guy. I mean, it's supposed to be, the scene is like everybody's going nuts and everybody's fighting each other and doing all this craziness. So this. Our character is probably going to be pretty nut. When I think of this character, I think of like Trevor from ETA. I think that would be pretty fun. And I know this is pretty tedious stuff, but like I said, you know, once we get through it all, you know, once it's set up, and playtesting is going to be pretty easy to do, or easier than what we had before. Now we, we potentially have 10 levels, and, and they're all playable, which is huge. Um, that's a huge jump in just a two-hour day window here. Alright. Save this scene. Let's take a look. 
And here we go. Looks like we're floating a little bit. Um, not sure why that is. Probably because I started them up so high already. We probably will, like I said earlier, he's floating again. Uh, we probably will want to create uh, or put rigid bodies on these guys. You know, have some kind of gravity effect. Got it. Be cool if this guy was all tatted up too, but this will work. And so that was level 9, and then our last level, level 10. My favorite one out of all of them, the Apocalyptic. And throw him over at the hotel here. Hotel. And we have a lot of characters here to work with, which is pretty fun. Um, Uh, a lot of them I feel like are based off of characters in like Walking Dead or something like that. So, like this girl looks like Michonne here. I don't know if any of you guys watch that show. I was a huge fan for a long time. This guy, you can tell who he looks like. Uh, you know, so we have we have a lot of options here. I think this guy is from a show called Daybreakers. They canceled that show, but it was a it was great. Then we got some zombies. I need to go with this guy, but I don't want him to be too similar to our character in the Battle Royale. But for now, I'll run with this guy. Actually, I didn't mean to unpack that completely. I just meant to un Last one, guys. We are getting it. It's gonna be really fun to start playing these scenes, start planning them out, testing them, getting some combat going. Once we got combat going, man. Gonna be a whole nother ball game. Whole nother game compared to what we've been having. And where's that other camera? Now, um, <laughs> one thing. Unlock this. One thing is, even though we didn't move the, I must have disabled some. Yeah, we disabled the. Oh no, we didn't. Oh. I don't know what we did, guys. Disabled something. <laughs> and... Yeah. 
course, the last one, Abish. Got this guy, that looks good. Guy's disabled. Here. Looks good. We forget to move the camera. We forgot to move the camera root up. Gotta be center mass, guys. There we go. We are now in the apocalypse. So, I think uh, I think we made good progress today. We now have 10 levels that we can select from the Dream Machine. We also have 10 playable, technically playable levels, um, all with different characters. Let me know what you guys think about the characters we selected today. Um, if you think we should use a different one or whatnot, that's, that's all that input is, is welcome. And then uh, I think next, our next day tomorrow, we will um, continue to work on these scenes, um, probably continue to work on our bunker scene as well. But we're going to want to really fine tune um, you know, these, these aspects, these concepts, and eventually we're even going to want to... Um, uh, somebody. Eventually we're going to even want to set it up where um, you know, we can actually shoot, and whatnot. We're gonna want combat systems per level. We're gonna want interactables for each one of these levels. Um, we're gonna want driving mechanics if we ever decide to do that. You know, there's gonna be a lot of concepts, so a lot of stuff's coming up, guys. Definitely, you know, stay tuned. And uh, uh, I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys being here. Thank you.